Hi, my name is Paul Sontag and today I'm excited to share Embark with you. In this project, we explored dynamic documents, which allow users to do their whole planning process within a, thing, a single medium. Instead of reaching out to external apps in Embark, users can pull all the computational tools they need directly into their document. This project was a joint effort together with Alexander Obenauer and Jeffrey Litt at the Ink and Switch Research Lab. To ground our research in a real use case, we picked travel planning because planning a trip requires you to pull together information from various data sources in order to make a good decision. So let's see as a baseline how we might plan a trip in our app-based world today. Let's say I want to go canoeing this weekend. I know there is a nice lake nearby called Wurdam and um, so maybe I might start my planning process by just pulling it up on Google Maps. And first, I want to know um, how can I get there. This is still easy enough to figure out and I can see it takes about one hour uh, by car. So next, I'm wondering what the weather will be. And this question lies out of the, outside of the realm of Google Maps, so I need to pull up uh, the weather app. And this is already where things kind of start to get tedious, because by default, it just shows me the forecast for my hometown. The problem is that a weather app is completely oblivious to the surrounding context. It doesn't know that right next to it, I'm looking um, at Google Maps and I have a specific location open. So I guess I have to punch in this information again. First, I try Rodan, that doesn't work. So next I try a city close by Heimbach. And finally, I get a forecast and I can see that Sunday is probably the best day to go. So now I have all this information, but the problem is all the views I composed here are completely ephemeral. As soon as I close these, all this information is gone. And this is, isn't even that complicated of, of a plan. Like maybe this is just one small decision of a bigger uh, context. Like I want to plan some activities for my friends. So how are users coping with this limitation today? One approach is to have a central information documents that user create to record all their decisions and collect information across multiple apps. But this approach has some limitations because a document is a static medium. So at most you can paste in uh, links or take screenshots, but you're losing a lot of the interactivity and the liveness that you're getting from apps. Also, this doesn't solve the context problem. The user is still forced to manually copy data back and forth. In general, we think having a central information document is a really great idea. But with Embark, we want to elevate this so the document becomes a substrate that can host both uh, the nodes of the user together with the computational tools they need. So how could this look like? Uh, first, let's look at what our apps made out of today. For example, if we look at Google Maps, like what, what are the parts? So first we can see we have locations, then uh, we have routes based on these locations, and finally we have a map that shows them together. But what are these parts? So a location is a piece of data. It's a thing that the app can operate on. And then the route is a computation. It's something the app can perform on the data. And finally, we have uh, the map, which is a view that renders both uh, data together with the result of computations. With Embark, our strategy is to unbundle the app. We do this by reifying data, computations and views as tangible things that a user can place in their document. So first we start out with an outliner as a, as a base substrate. So an outliner is a list of text nodes that can be nested and the user can then gradually enrich their outline by adding structured data, computations and views. Data can be referenced in the outline through mentions. Uh, in Embark, you can mention things like uh, locations or dates uh, or times, for example. Um, computations are represented as formulas in the outline. Formulas allow users to fetch live data like routing information or uh, to perform simple calculations from within the outline. And finally, we have interactive views, which can be opened for any node in the outline to the render the data that's contained within them. Next, let's see how we can actually use Embark. 
In this scenario, I have some friends visiting over the weekend and I want to plan some activities for them. I already have a couple of notes in my outline. So on Friday, my friends will arrive um, and we want to do some sightseeing. On Saturday, we have two activities planned, an art exhibit and a flea market. And finally, on Sunday, we want to go canoeing. Um, I've already talked about this plan in the introduction. Maybe we can start by fleshing out this a bit more. Uh, maybe I could add another stop in, on our tour. Uh, for example, I know there is a chocolate factory in Aachen, so maybe I should add this. I can do this by writing add uh, lint chocolate factory. And if I open this mention, I can see that the chocolate factory itself is also just an outline uh, with attribute nodes. And uh, this outline was automatically imported by the system for me. This is the first time that my friends are visiting Aachen. So for them, it would be really useful to see all these places on the map so they get a better feel for the city. There are a couple of ways I can do this in Embark. Uh, first, I could open a map for the whole outline next to the document. And now I can see all the places. I can even zoom in. If I hover over a marker, it gets highlighted in the outline. I can also open the details for a marker and the hover also works the other way around. I can also open up maps for individual days. So for example, let's open a map inline just for Friday. And by looking at these locations in isolation, I can see that most of the spots are pretty close by. Only the chocolate factory is further out. So probably we need to figure out how to get there. I'm going to close this for now. Besides just uh, placing maps in different uh, places of the outline, we can also customize the map itself. Right now it looks a bit cluttered, so maybe we can um, customize the markers. Um, for example, I can open the cathedral and add um, an icon attribute. And uh, this is a special attribute that the system recognizes. So if I change it to an emoji, it uses that emoji to render this marker. Um, it's still, still the map looks a bit cluttered, so maybe we could uh, color code uh, the locations by day. For that, we can use the color picker um, and I can assign a different color to each day. And now it's quite easy by looking at the map which, uh, which marker belongs to which day. And the way the color picker works is it adds a color attribute to each day and then all the locations contained within that day are rendered using that color. So now we have a pretty good overview of the, uh, the, of the trip. Next, let's figure out the details for each day. So for Friday, first of all, it would be really useful to uh, know what the weather will be. For that, we can use a weather formula. And we don't even have to write the formula by hand. Embark automatically suggests useful formulas. If I select a node here, I see formula suggestions using the data at this point in the outline. So I can add the weather and we can see that it won't rain. So we we'll probably will be fine. Next, let's figure out uh, how to get to the chocolate factory. Uh, here it's really useful that uh, Embark shows a preview of the result of each suggestion. suggestion. So we can use the, the list here to uh, comp compare different modes of transportation, like going by bus versus walking. And we can see uh, the bus is much faster. So I'll just add this. So now we've seen how we can add formulas to individual nodes, but sometimes it's also useful to uh, apply formulas throughout the outline. For example, it would be really useful to know the weather for each day. For that, Embark has an automation, so I can select a formula and use this repeat button to repeat the formula throughout the outline. And the way this works is that Embark infers automatically a pattern based on the parameters of uh, this formula. So in this case, it would look for nodes that mention a date and have a parent node that mention a location. And it's important to note that uh, this automation is just a one-time action. The formulas inserted here don't have any special behavior they behave exactly the same as if I had inserted them manually. The benefit of making things always concrete is that if the automation messes up, the user just has to fix concrete formulas. They don't have to think about abstract patterns. 
So now we figured out the details for Friday. Let's move on to Saturday. And we can see there are two activities, the art exhibit and the flea market. But we can see there is already a problem because it probably will rain. So the question is like, how do we sequence things so we can go to the flea market when it doesn't rain? And this is a question where Embark really shines because we need to consider both the opening hours of the flea market together with the weather forecast. And usually this information is spread across multiple apps, but here we have all that together in the same space. So to answer our question, all we have to do is open a calendar view for Saturday. And we can see here actually the um, weather has hourly data. It here only in the outline shows a summary. And next to it, we see uh, um, the opening hours of the flea market. And by looking at this calendar, it's immediately clear that we should go there in the morning because it's, it's less likely to rain. So maybe we should uh, rearrange our plan. Finally, I want to consider one last detail for Sunday. Actually, I don't own a car, so usually I uh, use a car sharing app. And it would be uh, interesting to know beforehand, like how much it will cost approximately to rent a car for the day. So I can do this kind of back of the envelope calculation um, by assigning this formula to an attribute. So I can write broad. And now I can uh, calculate the estimated cost by referencing the route and getting the distance of the route multiply that by two and each kilometer costs 30 cents and there's a 25 euro charge per day so now i know it takes it costs around 50 euros um, to rent a car i can also do um, calculations in line so i can say per person it will cost estimated cost divided by four so it's around 12 euro per person so now we've seen how um, we've, we've considered different pieces of information um, like transportation and the weather forecast. We visualized that information um, on maps and on calendars to make better decisions. And all of that we could do within the document. Not only was this much more convenient, it's also nice that we now have this artifact. Um, I can share this with my friends as an itinerary or I can also use this on the day to refer back to if I need to look up some information. Next, I want to tell you some personal stories how we in the team have used Embark to plan various trips. First, I want to talk about my colleague Jeffrey. Earlier this year, he did a road trip and in the middle he wanted to stop for dinner. So he was considering two uh, different restaurants. And with Embark, he was able to show the routes to both restaurants together on a single map. And by looking at the map, he quickly decided to pick the first restaurant because it split the trip more evenly and it also was a more scenic road uh, route along the coast. Of course, using research grade software requires some dedication because Embark doesn't run on mobile devices for the whole trip. Jeffrey was forced to carry around his laptop. Next, I want to talk about my colleague Alex. Uh, usually he works from RE traveling through the the US only COVID forced him to settle down for a while again. But during our project, he planned another round of uh, full-time RE travel. And with Embark, he was able to compile a personal wish list of alternative routes and points of interest together with uh, notes to uh, add additional context. By visualizing all this information together on a single map, he was able to flesh out his plan and uh, think about different alternatives. Finally, I want to talk about my own travel story. This year I participated in an adventure rally called Poles of Inconvenience together with my brothers. And the goal of this uh, adventure rally was to uh, uh, get a really crappy car and uh, visit as many of the poles as possible. And the poles were scattered all around Europe and beyond. And with Embark, I was able to create a color-coded map of all the poles. And this was a really useful asset uh, during the planning process. For example, one evening I was talking with my brothers on the phone and we were thinking whether we could uh, do three polls in one day. And to answer this question, I could just pull up uh, my planning document and quickly do some back of the envelope calculation to figure out how far the polls are apart. So next, let's zoom out and see what we've learned uh, through building Embark. 
it might be surprising that when we started this project, we didn't even think about documents. Initially, we explored how you can compose various widgets by placing them on a 2D canvas. For example, you could place a map widget next to a weather widget and have them share data with each other. But we quickly realized that this environment lacked a way to record our decisions. In contrast, once we started to host all the tools in the document, we were suddenly able to capture our whole thought process. And there are many things you can do with documents. For example, you can record how a decision evolves over time. You can uh, see what alternatives were considered and like why a certain option was picked in the, in the end. And this is very crucial information when you're looking back at a plan. We also found that the outline strikes a nice balance between structure and freedom. There are many things you can express with an outline, like a sequence of things or alternatives or group things. And it feels very fluid to express your thought like this. But there are also drawbacks to this approach because to the computer, the exact meaning of these outlines is a bit ambiguous. The only universal semantic we have is the parent-child relationship. In some cases, this is fine. For example, if we display a node on a map, we just collect all the locations that are contained within it and it feels fine. In other cases, it's a bit more tricky. For example, if you want to suggest good uh, formulas, it's very important to understand the implicit relationships between the nodes. And this is something we haven't fully figured out how to do with Embark. We also found that reifying computations enables composition. In Embark, formulas are tangible objects that the user can place anywhere in their outline. And this empowers users to solve many problems by just uh, composing different formulas and displaying the result in a view. For example, a user can create a list of routes and compare them together on a map. They can use the result of a formula to do some further calculations. They can compare different modes of transportation and they can even show different types of formulas together in the same context. Like here we see a route together with um, parking spots near the destination. And it's important to note that the last two examples are things that you can also do in Google Maps. But in Embark, these compositions are something that the user can create themselves. Compared to Google Maps, in Google Maps, um, each comp new composition type is a new feature. This is all I have to share with you right now. Thanks for watching. And if you're interested in more details, you can read uh, our full paper on inkandswitch.com slash embark.